So let's talk a little about the falsifiability and testability of solipsism. Before we even delve into the wiki document concerning the subject, we'll lead in with a quick probe scope overview of falsifiability. It's helpful to note up front that falsifiability is a dirty trick. It is an aim that was probably originally conceived as a method to box out religious concepts, such as supreme deities, from the debate of the reality equation, seemingly without any overt inequity. And while this specific aim may indeed be a productive exercise, overall it is malignant as it is also detrimental to understanding the truth of existence, as to establish a prerequisite of testability to the question of existence it is necessarily assuming a presuppositional stance upon a foundation of materialism. Hence, regulating the rules of engagement to a framework of objective realism. This is equivocal to a cheat in philosophical discourse, as it seeks to circumvent the truth by promoting the establishment of a falsehood as the assumed agreed-upon default premise. There cannot be comprehensive science, or any kind of scientific method with integrity for that matter, without that which gives these very methodologies context. And it's unwise to allow that a sign of authenticity is the ability to be proven false. This type of dictum would wind up giving something like astrology full legitimacy. So, moving on to the wiki document, it states, quote, Solipsism is not a falsifiable hypothesis, as described by Karl Popper or Emery Lekatos. There does not seem to be an imaginable disproof. One critical test is nevertheless to consider the induction from experience that the externally observable world does not seem at first approach to be directly manipulable purely by mental energies alone. One can indirectly manipulate the world through the medium of the physical body, but it seems impossible to do so through pure thought, i.e. via psychokinesis. It might be argued that if the external world were merely a construct of a single consciousness, i.e. the self, it could then follow that the external world should be somehow directly manipulable by that consciousness. And if it is not, then solipsism is false. An argument against this states the notion that such manipulation may be possible, but barred from the conscious self via the subconscious self, a locked portion of the mind that is still nevertheless the same mind. Lucid dreaming might be considered an example of when these locked portions of the subconscious become accessible. An argument against this might be brought up in asking why the subconscious of the mind would be locked, also the access to the autonomous locked portions of the mind during the lucid dreaming is obviously much different, for instance, is relatively more transient and the access to the autonomous regions of the perceived nature. The method of the typical scientist is materialist. They first assume that the external world exists and can be known. But the scientific method, in the sense of a predict, observe, modify loop, does not require the assumption of an external world. A solipsist may perform a psychological test on themselves to discern the nature of the reality in their mind. However, David Douche uses this fact to counter-argue. Outer parts of solipsists may behave independently, so they are independent for narrowly defined conscious self. A solipsist's investigations may not be proper science, however, since it would not include the cooperative and communitarian aspects of scientific inquiry that normally serve to diminish bias." Unquote.
So, of course, solipsism isn't a falsifiable hypothesis, as solipsism isn't even a hypothesis. The former is the truth of awareness. The latter is an abstraction. A hypothesis is an assumptive explanation made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for further investigation. So right there it's laid bare. The starting point for inquiry is established on a falsehood. Does that seem like any way to conduct a proper investigation? Not unless you are trying to circumvent the truth. And so, what is the erroneous assumption here? Well, since the proposed explanation is asserted to be predicated upon limited evidence, this means that the false premise being advanced here is that reality is an objectified material configuration physically existing apart from that which gives existential manifestation context. The implications of solipsism need no outside verification. To refer to evidence is to refer to illusion as a reinforcement of a delusion. How does that sound? We're deluded by a fantasy, and so we refer to the fantasy as a means to authenticate the fantasy and forget our delusion. I don't think that's proper science. That's just plain old dishonesty. And I know it's common to hear people speak about evidence, and we place a lot of stock in it, don't we? Indeed, we hear about it all the time, especially in material science. But be wary of people who speak of citing evidence. It's deceptive. I know it seems ironic and contrary to common sensibilities, but only liars point towards evidence as support beams to the fundamental truth. There's no evidence of blah 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 assumes materialism, and this assumption denotes a reality via an abstraction. The substances that we wrongly assume are objectified are in fact just an appearance in the stream of sensory perception. The I, we think, is the undeniable only existing truth is no different. The ego is also just another pattern in sensory perception. Objectivity is a complete fantasy. There cannot be a dream of an illusory world without the imagination that dreams it into existence. To look upon a dream world assuming a template of objective materialism is the definition of delusion and is the faulty assumption that facilitates falsehood over the truth. So, solipsism isn't a hypothesis. More accurately stated, solipsism is a foundational axiom preceding any abstractions. Awareness is undeniable and should not be attempted to be disproven, as to even do so would, at best, only disprove the context of the disproof. You can deny awareness all you want, but to deny that which gives context to the denial is to disqualify the basis of the very denial. Falsification and testability are confined solely to the so-called material aspects of reality. Hence Karl Popper's criteria of demarcation that is, the method used to discern between science and non-science, 
is poorly envisioned and errors in its attempt to execute its imagined intent. And so what about the idea that solipsism is possibly disproven by the fact that people cannot practice psychokinesis? It's a common argument, but it doesn't hold much water. The main reason why is because people think telekinesis would be facilitated by the mere thinking of thoughts. But thoughts have nothing to do with manipulating physicality. It's a common misconception and extends into many areas of spirituality. As we have often heard about the importance of faith and belief and the power of positive thinking, which are all touted to be some sort of magical ability when all they really are is internal dialogue. And the results? It's really no secret. If you think about something enough, chances are you will act upon it. If you act upon it, there's a high likelihood you'll make some progress towards your goal. It's that simple. The universe isn't doing anything to fulfill your desires. And there isn't any metaphysical magnetic law of attraction at work to bring your egoic success. That's all a bunch of bullshit peddled by snake oil salesmen. If anything, psychokinesis is employed by the cessation of thoughts. Thoughts are the obstacle obstructing this functionality. And this is the main reason why the majority of humans are disconnected from it. Humans are non-stop thinking machines. And this over-reliance on the thinking function ends up producing many, many unconscious mental blockades. If anything, telekinesis would be enabled by the realization that all experiential phenomena is a mental state of which physicality is a component. Another misconception concerning this is the assumption that solipsism asserts a single consciousness. No, there are billions and billions of consciousnesses. A never-ending supply, in fact. Solipsism asserts a single awareness, not a single consciousness. This is the most common mistake novice solipsists often make. I'm the only consciousness that exists. My ego is the only ego that can truly be known to be existing. The problem with this is misidentification. You are not an egoic consciousness. The true identity is the empty self. The real self is the nothingness of pure awareness. And awareness is not existential. So it cannot act or take on any type of shape or form in existence. Hence, there is a blockade of sorts preventing consciousness from being omnipotent. Consciousness has to play by the rules of the game, and bending those rules has nothing to do with any kind of trick that has to be learned by a consciousness. Bending those rules has to do with the liberation from the identification with consciousness. And facilitating this liberation has nothing to do with the right assortment of abstractions or slapping a proper label on the most correct identification. Since awareness is unlimited, it has no distinction of self, thus must impose restriction upon itself to collapse consciousness into an existential state. This is why the avenue towards true self-realization, lucidity, and enlightenment is not found through anything an egoic consciousness can accomplish. 
understand that lucidity is not unlocking hidden unconscious powers. Lucidity is realizing that all phenomenal content is illusion, including the personified consciousness. And lastly, the final part of the wiki document talks about how science isn't exclusive to materialism and suggests that the solipsist can use the same method to test its own psychology of reality in the mind. And this is true, mostly, but it's about more than just a psychology. This is, again, a return to the whole ego as the center of the universe, modus operandi. No, what you are learning the ins and outs of transcends the ego. Learning how the illusion works, i.e. the materiality, is just the surface. Learning how the introspective works is the much deeper exploration. And how that introspective utility functions in relation to the images up on the screen of perception. Once this is understood, then it can be seen that there are no outer parts of a solipsist acting independently. They may seem to be to one that is deluded, or as the article said it, they are independent to a narrowly defined conscious self. Whatever the hell that is supposed to mean. It doesn't matter that you can frame the bullshit to be technically correct. It's still bullshit. A conditional truth doesn't cut the absolute mustard. But then the article backpedals a bit, and in seemingly second thoughts, reasserts that solipsism can't really be proper science, since others can't be incorporated into the mix through collaborative or communicative inquiry, which is said to reduce bias. There's no need to backpedal on this. Just drop the identifications. That isn't what's performing an inquiry. No self, no others. No ego, no alter ego. They are all cut from the same cloth and none of them are conducting any proper science. To get caught up in these personas is what necessarily creates bias. You can't get more unbiased than emptiness. An ego, even if in a large faction, isn't getting any real truth validation by having other egos provide third-party verification. This is, again, justifying the delusion by referencing the illusion. Solipsism addresses the equation considering the stream of sensory perception as a whole in relation to its context. If one is trapped within the confines of the screen, then they cannot yet be said to have realized authentic truth. <laughs>